This little bag of delights is my medication bag. Um, that's um, the Fepramine, which is antidepressants, which I take at night. Um, that's Tamazepam, which um, is a pretty heavy sleeping tablet. Knock out the elephant nervous. And um, that's Phloxetine, Prozac, which I'm going to take now. Even though I'm not ashamed of my honest, I don't tell a lot of people. It's a bit of a private thing. Depression is actually viewed in two ways. Firstly, it's viewed as just, um, oh, it's not a real illness, you're just a bit sad, you're just not very happy, you've had a bad day. Or secondly, people think it's a mental illness and that's it. They just think of nutters and tabloid headlines and maniacs and things like that. People just react with disbelief, mostly. Shake yourself up. All you need is a kick up the arse, that's what you get. You know, it's not a real illness. You don't really need tablets for that. Oh, I'll bet I'm not mad anymore. Well, it's uh, Wednesday night. I just got in from work not long ago. I actually had a very good day today. Um, and I'm certainly, at the moment, out of the deep depression that I seem to have been in for a while. I, I find it hard, really, to see any future. So things seem okay, just... pretty black, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, sort of, what's the point? What's the point of doing anything? And, mm -hmm. um, I think I feel constantly exhausted. Everything I do is... Yeah, always exhausts me, and I feel ex just uh -huh. exhausted mentally rather than physically. Oh, I've got a badge. <laughs> downhill from here, it says. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> it's all downhill from here. Probably right. Three decades. It's not a bad cricket score. There's only been times when I never thought I'd get this far, so in some ways I'm quite pleased. Why's that, Steve? Well, I, I believe it's down. It's down in most parts of my illness uh, to depression. Um, it's a very debilitating uh, illness. It's not just about being a bit sad every now and again. Um, it actually takes over your life and uh, you can't... Uh, it, sounds a bit, it, sounds, it sounds strange, but it's just impossible to do things. It just is not possible. You don't have the willpower, you don't have the motivation. When I was 10 years old, my mother, she um, committed suicide um, whilst on a family shopping trip. It's probably very difficult to trust anybody ever in that life ever again. And I tend to have gone to life through life either trying to build myself up into this thing that I'm not. In order to get people to like me and need me and want me. Sort out of it. Know that anyway. Happiness just isn't a part of my life that I can keep going for very long. <laughs> I know that sounds stupid. I know so that sounds completely crazy. But it's not. It didn't just affect our marriage, it was always a part of our marriage, really. It was always there in the background. Steve quite often said that. I was his miracle cure. The back of your mind, you know that it's not true really and he was by no means better. <laughs> One day he'd be fine and the next day he would be quite depressed. Sometimes when you walk through the door you didn't know what you were going to find. I'm just grateful for the time we did have together and certainly if he asked me again I'd get married again tomorrow. I wouldn't do anything any different and I don't think he would either. I've been a loser all my life and it's not changing now. <laughs> it's 
still can't do the basic things in life. I still can't build and hold on to relationships with people. Real people, not people like me, who's just heads all over the shop all the time and curled up crying in the corner one minute and can't deal with things the way other people deal with them. Victoria separated. Steve is like the nicest man that I've ever met and I think we had two really happy years together and I don't regret a second of that. I just wanted to be there for him. Thanks. When I'm relatively well, I... I... I just don't need the, the confines of a relationship. Um, and when I'm de when I'm depressed, I'm, I'm too too clingy and too you know, need it too much. And that's not healthy for anybody. That's so not healthy for Vic. Moving forward, when you have depression, when you have real clinical depression, it's like you're fighting against. Absolutely everything. You know, you're not just fighting against all the other things in the world that, that general people have to fight against. You have to fight against yourself as well. Fight against your own feelings and emotions that aren't really based in reality. I wasn't diagnosed until three years ago, um, but with hindsight, I can look back on my whole life and my childhood and know that I was suffering very acutely from it. I feel this sleeping tablet kicking in now. Sometimes I just wish I'd never wake up again. It'd just fucking be easier. I don't have to deal with all this shit. <laughs> People wouldn't have to deal with me. I hope there is a heaven out there somewhere because this place is hell. <laughs> Whenever I come out here, it makes me feel better. It's very quiet and very lonely. Well, I think about things like what happened with my mum almost constantly. And these are the things that, that weigh upon my mind. And, and coming to a place like this just stops me thinking about those sort of things. My mother really loved the countryside and this kind of place. Sometimes it feels like the entire problems of the world are on your back. And coming out here makes you realise that your own little world isn't really that important. And there are things of much more majestic beauty that it's always worth waking up for the next morning. <laughs>